Hi everyone, and welcome back to English for You. I'm Pat, and I'm Mike. And today we're discussing more about the Camino de Santiago, a long walking journey that starts from several different points in Europe. But whichever route you take, it ends in Spain at the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela in Galicia, Spain. Now, why these places and why this route? Well, it's said that the remains of Saint James, the great apostle Saint James, were discovered there by a shepherd hundreds of years ago. And so, of course, many Christians, many people who are religious and believed very strongly in Jesus and his followers and all that stuff, well, of course, they were excited, so they went there to see the remains of this important person, Saint James. Now, people still do this walk for religious reasons. But they'll do it for other reasons too, as a long walking holiday to see nice places in Europe, to kind of get some exercise and work on their health and fitness, or to kind of take a break from their lives, sort of regroup their minds a bit, find a new purpose, work out what's important to them. Maybe if they need a big change, they might do something like this and come out of the end of it with a fresh start. Sounds good. So there are a lot of good reasons to do it, and here's another one. There's a big social aspect to this pilgrimage or this long walk. People walk alone. That's fine, but it's very common for you to meet other people, to make friends, to travel in groups, to kind of, you know, join up with people who maybe you've never met before, but they just happen to be on the same route as you, walking to the same place as you on the same day as you. Instant friends. So that's another fun thing about it. Mm, today we're going to look at a couple of the popular routes. Remember, there are several the routes or routes that people take to get to the cathedral. Let's find out more. Reading. Seeking adventure? Check out the Camino de Santiago. The French way is the most popular route and has a lot of history behind it. The main route was described in detail around the year 1135 in Codex Calixtinus. This book is great for showing what the pilgrimage was like at that time. It includes many comments on the sanctuaries found along the route. These detail things like the people, the food, natural springs, and local customs. The Portuguese coastal way is more of an adventure. This route is better if you prefer more time alone. It isn't as well marked by signs, so make sure you have your phone for navigation. There is a wide variety of terrain, including highways, paths along the coast, dirt roads, and rocky trails. It's best traveled in the summer. Not passing through any mountains. The route doesn't have many changes of elevation, so it's not too difficult. These are just two of the many routes on the Camino de Santiago. Before beginning your adventure, you should research which route would be best for you. It's sure to be a special experience. All right. So the article for today begins by telling us about one of the more well-known and Probably popular routes too. The French way is the most popular route and has a lot of history behind it. Okay, so the routes are given names in the same way that if you go to the, uh, a forest or a national park, they might have names for the different hikes: the waterfall trail, the the vista trail, the valley trail, or something like that. Here, these are known maybe by areas that they travel to and the people who used to travel along these different routes. The French way, we imagine, probably takes you into France, and it was the the、uh, route that many French travelers、uh, took to get to、um, to Compostela. Sorry, to get to Galicia to get to the cathedral.、Um, and there's a long history behind this route. Yeah, we learn that the main route, the main French way, was described in detail around the year 1135 in Codex Calixtinus. Possibly a monk or someone who did the journey and described it in detail.、Hmm. If you do something in detail, then you do it with a lot of details. You don't just give the basic route, go here, here, here. You describe everything you see, all the places you'll pass through, other things you might want to stop and experience. Maybe the food, maybe the wilderness and the countryside. You just put in everything if you do it in detail. 
Absolutely. So, of course, there's a long history to this route. It's been around for 900 years, almost. So that's kind of interesting. And it also says this book, that's the Codex Calixtinus, this book is great for showing what the pilgrimage was like at that time. Now, that's kind of cool. You can go and travel the same route that French people and others were traveling almost a thousand years ago. And by reading the book, or at least, you know, having it with you, you can get an idea about what it was like for people back then. You know what it's like for people today. And I'm sure you'll find some things that are not changed much at all. Things that are still common to traveling this route almost a thousand years later. Mm, and we see that it, so this book, it includes many comments on the sanctuaries found along the route. We'll explain what those are in a moment, but let's first look at the word comment. A comment is a remark. It's a kind of a brief mention or description of your thoughts or your feelings about or on a certain topic. And we often think of this in the modern age as being what you leave on social media. Somebody posts a video, you write a comment. Someone puts a photo on Facebook, you leave a comment. A few words just to say what you think, how you feel about this particular thing. And you can leave a long comment which really goes into detail about your thoughts. So in this case, as this guy, presumably a monk of some kind, has walked along, he's made many comments about the place I stopped. Oh, this was great. This was beautiful. This one's quite small, but still very important. He's leaving his thoughts and feelings about the places. Here's in a way we can use it in a sentence in a modern context. Hey, thanks for leaving that nice comment on my latest YouTube video. Best video I ever saw. I mm. watched it a hundred times yesterday. Nice. Nice comment like that. All right. And then we also had this word, a sanctuary. So this writer, almost a thousand years ago, was making comments on the sanctuaries along the French way, this route to, to, to walk down into Spain. What is a sanctuary? Well, basically, it's a place of safety that you can go where you feel safe, where you're protected, maybe where people know you. It could actually be a real physical place, like in many churches, there's an area called a sanctuary one of the most holy parts of the church, where the altar is, where maybe only the priests or the religious leaders can go. But you can also say, my home is my sanctuary. When I'm stressed, when I'm tired, when I've had a bad day, I go home and people are nice to me and my favorite food is there and my comfortable bed. And it's somewhere you kind of feel like you're safe. Nothing can hurt you. You're protected. And you sort of recharge your batteries and get a little happier. And then you can get back out there in the kind of cra crazy, dangerous world. And when things are ever too bad, you go back to that safe, comfortable place, your sanctuary. So this guy, again, I'm assuming it's a, a writer who wrote this book after going on the pilgrimage. He left comments about these sanctuaries. And we see in the article, these, so these comments, detail things like the people, the food, natural springs, and local customs. So this is like a really early, like a travel guide. It's a, uh, it's a lonely planet travel guide. Yeah, yeah a rough, exactly. rough guide to you know, southwestern right. Europe. Something. A very rough guide. Yeah, uh, and like a travel guide of, of our time, it details things. We looked at the phrase in detail earlier. Now we're using the word detail as a verb. And it means to add details, to describe something further. Again, this isn't just like there's a restaurant on the corner. And that's it. That's not detailed, which is the adjective form. If you detail that restaurant, you'll be saying how long it's been open, what it looks like inside, what the food is like, how expensive the food is, what the atmosphere is, how good the staff are. You're putting in lots and lots of information, description. You're putting in lots of details. So we could say, for example, this brochure details many of the things you can do while on the cruise ship. Okay, because I want more information. I've exactly. never been on a cruise ship, so I can read a big list, a big description of all the fun things. So there we go. We've detailed a little bit about the history of the French way. Notice the, at the very beginning, we said it's the most popular route. And there's probably a few good reasons behind that. A lot of people from France were traveling on it, and maybe it was slightly easier or safer to walk or something like that. That might have had something to do with how popular it was. And then we learn the Portuguese coastal way 
is more of an adventure. Mm. Mm. When something like that is described as an adventure, to me it sounds maybe a little dangerous, a little more exciting, a little more risky. Um, and certainly more beautiful because it's coastal. Now that sounds good to me because anything related to the coast, we would use this adjective coastal and the coast is where the land meets the sea. So think of a beach, that's the coast. Think of those big cliffs they have down there by Taidong or somewhere where the land ends and you can stand at the top of this cliff, this high mountain or this high uh, rock shelf and you can look out over the water. So anywhere, basically, where the water meets the, the, the ocean or the sea or something like that, we would call that the coast and relating to that coastal. So a coastal town, a coastal fishing village, a coastal hotel or resort, something like that. And we have this phrase, be more of something or to be more of something. And as it's a be verb, it can be is, was, has been and so on. This is a way to make a comparison. We're saying the coastal way is more of an adventure. And the unspoken part of that comparison, it's more of an adventure than the French way is. So it's comparing the Portuguese coastal way and the French way and saying the coastal way is more of an adventure. And it's saying this, this phrase is used to say something is more like this than another thing is. So I might say the, the film was more of a documentary than a film, saying the film was more like a documentary than just an average like action film or something like that. We're, we're making a comparison between two things. So while the French way is this kind of popular but maybe easier route, this Portuguese way, it's more like an adventure. It's got more difficulties. It's got more challenges. And we're comparing it to an adventure. Absolutely. An adventure is something that will bring difficulties. It will bring challenges, but it will also probably bring, bring excitement and thrills and maybe some kind of life-changing experience because that's when it, what an adventure is. It's something a little dangerous, a little difficult, a little exciting, a little thrilling, something you'll definitely remember and tell all your friends about when you get home or, you know, after it's all over. You could have an adventure in your own town if you go to a place you've never been to before or get involved in some kind of exciting, unusual event or activity. For example, it was quite an adventure rowing our own boat down the Amazon River. Wow, that does sound like an adventure. Mm, so this Portuguese coastal route is a bit more adventurous and challenging. And as we see in the article, this route is better if you prefer more time alone. Oh, so there not as popular, fewer yeah, travelers. Won't be as many people doing it, but if you are there to really find yourself and think about things, then maybe this one is the route for you. True, true. But again, if you get lost, you might not have anyone around to help you, like all the people you would meet on the French way route. And here's some good advice in that case. It isn't as well marked by signs. So make sure you have your phone for navigation. Yeah, good tip. Very few people around. They don't have a lot of signs showing you, you know, go this way or a certain town is five kilometers this way. You kind of have to figure it out on your own. You could use an old paper map. I'm sure they have those. But you can also, of course, use your phone these days for navigation. If I say the three letters GPS... You guys probably know what that is, right? If you're lost, you get out your phone, turn on the GPS, and it shows you how to get to the place you're trying to find. That's basically navigation, finding your way around. If we're talking about go left, go right, go straight, north, south, east, west, go over this mountain and turn left at the farm, that kind of thing, that's all about navigation, finding your way from one place to another, either by using your experience, by using your eyes to find the way, or by using GPS, computers, the way airplane pilots to, uh, do it, to find their way all across the world. So there, there's something to be said for this coastal route, though. It's going to be one of the more beautiful ways to get to the cathedral. Okay, but there's no one there to talk about how no. beautiful it is with. No, but okay. what we do learn is that uh, <laughs> there is a wide variety of terrain, including highways, paths along the coast, dirt roads, and rocky trails. So you're not just going to be following big, well-used paths here. You could have to really hike over little mountains and hills and up and down cliff faces and so on. It's not going to be easy. 
And part of the reason for the problem or the difficulty, the challenge, is the wide variety of terrain. If there's a wide or a great variety of something, we use this phrase to say there are lots of different types of that thing. If a restaurant has just a couple of desserts, that's not a wide variety. But if it has 10 different types of pies, cakes, ice creams, and so on, that is a wide or a great variety of desserts. And here there was a wide variety of terrain along the Portuguese coastal way. What is the terrain? Basically, it's the land and its features. So imagine you're standing on top of a, a mountain or a big hill, and you're looking at all this land that stretches out below you. Well, that's the terrain. It might be mountainous terrain. It might be flat terrain, like where you might find a lot of farms. It might be a coastal terrain where you can see the land on one side and the ocean on another. But basically, the geography, the shape of the land, the things that you would look at when you're looking out over a landscape that is the terrain. Hmm. And some of this terrain includes paths along the coast. And as we've already mentioned, the coast is the area where the sea meets the land. And there are also some rocky trails. Yeah, if it's rocky, again, your comfortable shoes will be very handy here because rocky just means there's lots of rocks. It's not smooth. It's not flat. Uh, a road in a town or a city is not rocky. It will be smooth and flat. That's why your car doesn't bounce around all over the place. But if you try to take a car or a bicycle up a mountain path, or maybe along the Portuguese coastal way, you'll find it's not very comfortable and it's tough on your bike. You might break your bicycle or something because it's too rocky. It's too rough. There are too many rocks. For example, maybe we should move down there. This part of the beach is too rocky to sit on. Yeah, don't sit there. And these are rocky trails. So they're trails that have got a lot of rocks either on them, under them. They're going through rocks and mm. over rocks. But it's a trail. And a trail is a path. But it's a path through the countryside, the wild country, through mountains and forests. Not a little nice paved alley down the middle of a city or through a small village. But so the sort of thing that animals might have used in the past and walkers would use to walk up and down and over hills. So we could say, for example, the trail leads down to a little cabin by a lake. Sounds lovely. And the next thing we learn about the Portuguese coastal way kind of makes sense when we think of all the other things we've learned. It's best traveled in the summer. So it's best traveled here, meaning it's best to travel on this or travel by this way in the summer. Well, yeah, sure, it's rocky <laughs> if it rains. In the winter, it might become very dangerous. With no signs, you could get lost. And of course, in the winter, it gets cold and dark very early. So it might be dangerous, especially if you're alone going along this route in the winter time. But the summer would be perfect. Mm. One thing this route doesn't really have, though, is mountains. The French way would go through the mountains between Spain and France, but the Portuguese way doesn't. We see not passing through any mountains the route doesn't have many changes of elevation, so it's not too difficult. Now, here we've got our language in focus today, which is a participle clause. And that is the first part of this sentence, not passing through any mountains. A participle clause enables us to say information in a more economical way, a quicker way. And they're formed using the V-I-N-G present participle, going, reading, seeing, or a past participle, gone, read, seen, walked. Or it could be a perfect participle, having gone, having read, having seen, and so on. And we can use these when the uh, subject of the participle is the same as the subject of the main clause. For example, instead of saying, while I was waiting for Ellie, I made some tea, we could say, waiting for Ellie, I made some tea. We omit the subject from this first clause. And we've got another one in our article, not passing through any mountains, the route doesn't have many changes. Or we could say, because the route doesn't pass through any mountains, the route doesn't have many changes of elevation. And since it's the same subject, we just make that first clause shorter. All but right. What and do we mean word, by elevation? Yeah, that word elevation is very important when talking about paths or traveling, especially when we're traveling through the countryside. Elevation is basically height. When we measure the height of anything, we're talking about the things on the, on the land, the things that are part of the surface of the earth or built onto the land. 
you wouldn't say my elevation is 178 centimeters. No, that's your height. But if we're talking about the height of something, especially something big like a mountain, uh, a tall building possibly, we could talk about being at a certain elevation at the top of Taipei 101. But especially if we're talking about a mountain, a hill, you know, something like that that can be measured from a lower area like sea level up to the top of it like Mount Everest or something like that, we would talk about the elevation of something. So the article then says, these are just two of the many routes on the Camino de Santiago. There you go. And I'm sure there are a lot of other just as interesting and just maybe also as historic routes as that you can take. But it does give us a one last good piece of advice. Before beginning your adventure, you should research which route would be best for you. Yeah, if it's your first time, maybe take an easier one. If you don't want to meet people, maybe avoid the French way. You know, a lot of different things to uh, think about. And I'm sure a lot of things you can learn by doing your research. Mm. And we've got another participle clause there. Here in this sentence, before beginning your adventure is the same as before you begin your adventure. Okay, and then we also had the word research there when we're talking about gathering information, about learning things, going to the library, looking up stuff on Wikipedia or Google because you want to learn more. Maybe you have to learn more for your homework, or maybe you're just interested in a certain thing and like, hey, that's interesting. I don't know much about it. I'd like to learn more about it. You're going to go off and do some research by gathering facts, information, data, about something so you understand it even better. For example, let's research how much it would cost to open a new coffee shop. And as the article finishes, we see it's sure to be a special experience. So the whole Camino is sure to be a special experience. For sure it is. And that brings us to the end of our article. So let's talk a bit more about the routes in our For You Chat question. For You Chat. So the question is, would you prefer to take the more social French way or would you prefer spending more time alone on the Portuguese coastal way? Explain your answer. That's a really interesting question. I don't know. Well, since I've never done this, the French way sounds a bit safer, right? You know, they have more signs and it's not quite as rocky and things like that. But I don't know, talking to strangers and walking with strangers the whole time I might want some time alone, but I think if it was my first time, I think the French way would just be safer. And yeah, you'd I also do. get to learn and meet lots of new people and learn from their experience. Hmm, I'd do the French way as well. I would I would like to walk with people and do this with people. And if I wanted time alone, I would just go, hey guys, I wanna I wanna walk by myself for a day or a half a day or something and just break off and then maybe I'll join another group later and meet different people. I I like the social aspect, I think of doing this whole thing. I think walking by yourself for a long time would get really boring for me. But there you go. That's all the time we've got. Thanks for listening, everyone, for English for You. I'm Pat. And I'm Mike. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Vocabulary Review Comment Alex wrote a public comment at the end of the news story he read on the internet. Detail. This report details some simple things we could do to help our company use less energy. Adventure. Nick is traveling to South America next week, and he's excited about the adventure. Rocky. The rocky hills stood out against the plains of grass around them. Trail. This hiking trail leads from New Taipei City to Elon, and it takes about four hours to finish. Research Tom researches bugs, so he spends lots of time in the forest looking for interesting ones. Sanctuary Navigation Terrain Elevation
。如欲索取视听教材，请来电零二二三六四四零零零零二二三六四四零零零，或上网查询，网址是 triple w dot english 四 u dot net triple w dot english 四 u dot net。